Hello and welcome. This is Rhodes University's pilot podcast series and uh, today we are focusing on the RU120 program. I am Amila Skepe and thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I'm not alone however, I am joined by uh, the academic Dr. Luzuko Jacobs and uh, the doc will explain and elaborate on the RU120 uh, project at uh, large. Doc, how are you doing today? I'm good, thanks Amila, and thanks for the opportunity to be here with you. All right, thank you so much, Doc. We're graced by your presence. Um, we're also grateful that you decided to, you know, spare us your time in your busy schedule. And uh, Doc, our first question goes to um, what is the RU120 project and uh, what does it entail and what does it mean for the university? Yeah, Amila, you introduced yourself and said this is a, a, a pilot. Yes podcast. Yes. But it sounds like you're a seasoned pilot yourself. <laughs> um, RU120 is a, is a dream, mm -hmm. is a vision, is a platform, yes. um, it's a call, it's a combination of many things mm -hmm. aimed at co-creating um, uh, something that all people who are invested in Rhodes University brand, in mm -hmm. brand Rhodes University could be proud of. Okay. So it is a it is a it is a concept that is about students. It is a concept that is about the alumni, our funders, and the, and the friends of Rhodes University. Mm -hmm. As much as it is about the local Makanda community, mm -hmm. it is about a celebration of our bicentennial, which is our hundred and twentieth year in existence. Rhodes University was founded. In 1904, so 2024 mm. is a big year yes. where we showcase that which characterizes our identity and makes us who we are over the years. Okay, nice. And I'm also proud to be a part of such an initiative. I mean, Rhodes University has indeed come a long way and it's something to be really proud of. Now, moving to our next question, um, you spoke about stakeholders, right? Now, who are the stakeholders involved in the RU120 project and uh, what is their input in, you know, making sure that this project comes to par and succeeds in the year of 2024? Yeah, an excellent question, mm -hmm. because this project is nothing without the key stakeholders. Yes. In fact, it's a product of co-creation, like I said, mm -hmm. right from inception. In fact, we launched it and inaugurated the project on the 20th of April this year. We wanted to give ourselves enough lead time mm -hmm. and invest that time in engaging with stakeholders, bringing them on board mm -hmm. and generating ideas and concepts from them about what, how they envision RE120 to roll out. Oh, because remember, yes. RE120 is a year-long um, uh, program okay. of celebration, of commemoration, of reflection, um, and just seeking to refine mm -hmm. the various aspects in the, in the entire value chain okay. uh, of the university's um, role. Mm -hmm. So as part of that consultation, we, we, we sat down and identified the stakeholders mm -hmm. and consulted with all of them. Yes. Key among these are students. Nice, yes. Um, and then we also engaged with the, the academic um, leadership. Mm -hmm. um, we met with the deans. Mm -hmm. um, we met with the workers of this university. Mm -hmm. There are two recognized unions, Ndeo and Nehao. Okay. We met with them and we met with our alumni. We had a virtual platform that was beautifully subscribed. Okay. We had people logging in from different time zones. It was good to see people logging in on the platform from Scandinavia, from mm. the Northern America, yes. from Kukuletu, mm. from Pochefstrom. So the entire alumni community came on board. Mm -hmm. We have got the local community mm -hmm. um, as part of the stakeholders and of course we've got our funders. There are people who are invested in the success of this brand who have been invested in the success of this brand and we are engaging with them at this time. Mm -hmm. So the best approach we, that we conceptualized was to structure RU120 by the Centennial um, celebration into a project. Mm -hmm. And we've got 10 self-directing teams, or okay. call them sub-projects. They cover different spaces, they cover the full um, spectrum of the purposes of the university, from uh, teaching and learning, mm -hmm. to research, mm -hmm. to community engagement, uh, to leadership and transformation, mm -hmm. to our footprint in sustainable development goals. Um, so 
with that in mind, we structured the project into issues relating to sports, culture, and student experience. We've got an uh, intellectual program, we have events, we've got media marketing and communication, um, we've got publications, uh, we've got um, uh, resource mobilization, mm -hmm. and on and on and on. Yes. These are self-directed teams that are constituted organically by members of the university community working with, 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 with outside uh, people, in other words, outside of the primary um, the university yes. community stakeholders. For mm -hmm. instance, we have got a directing structure that is called the steering committee. Mm -hmm. It is chaired by our board of governors, mm -hmm. who happens also to be um, a, res a, a Gibbs resident executive, who is also the chairperson of Transnet. Mm -hmm. And we have got uh, an international or global footprint built into that structure. Okay. It is represented by Miss Caroline Rollins, for example, who is the chair of the UK Trust of Rhodes University. Mm -hmm. We also have got the chair of the US Trust, Mr. Donovan Mill May. Okay. And we've got a cross section of stakeholders on that steering committee students, workers, uh, academics. Um, from various entities okay. on, on campus. Also, our unions are also part of the steering committee. Okay. And uh, we invited our uh, one of our retired professors because you see the thing is about Rhodes University. And people have said it, and I thought it was a joke. I realized that it isn't. That when the roads are bites, it doesn't let go. Mm -hmm. Once you go through the Rhodes University experience, it doesn't just forms. It doesn't just form you. Mm -hmm. um, it reforms you. You become. Uh, you get into a lifelong relationship with Rhodes University, whether you are here or not. Mm -hmm. So one of our professors who had served the university for over 35 years and exited as the um, Deputy Vice Chancellor for Research, Innovation and Strategic Partnerships, mm -hmm. Professor Peter Clayton, retired mm -hmm. last year. And he graciously agreed to come back and be the project sponsor mm -hmm. uh, for, for this. So he is the face of the project. He calls himself an arm wrestler. He hasn't had to wrestle or break any arms either too and I'm sure that it will continue as smooth as it has started uh, without any arms being broken because everybody is just so invested into it okay. and everybody just wants to see to its success. So we've got that cross-section of stakeholders. We've even opened platforms for them to provide us with inputs and as part of those inputs they're giving us ideas to mm. further expand the network. Okay. And let me just conclude your, the answer to your question in this way. Yes. The latest group to come on board is a group that calls itself Knocking on Heaven's Door. Um, these are the veterans mm -hmm. uh, who have been here because part of Rhodes University 120 is about a multi-generational call down memory lane, mm -hmm. uh, seeking to reunite, to reconnect and to reimagine. And we're doing that in collaboration with all the generations all the way to the current generation. Interestingly, one of the initiatives by the intellectual program self-directing team is to produce a seminal documentary that connects George Corey mm -hmm. uh, to Tebelo Nyoko. Okay. Um, you know, once you start tracking South Africa, not just Rhodes University, but yes. South African scholarship uh -huh. from that framework and angle, you just appreciate the contribution that Rhodes has made to the contribution of scholarship in South Africa of research. Okay. Um, so Rhodes University started on a very high note, which is why we have got the pedigree that we've got, and, yes. and the pride and the history and the legacy. Um, but it has not stopped because today, in fact next year, one of the highlights is the launching of the Tebron Yokong Institute of Nanotechnology, oh. um, which is iconic. Yes. In every way, you know, globally, uh -huh. not just South Africa. When you talk to Blue you're not talking an ordinary <laughs> person. Uh, you're talking an extraordinary research academic who has been acknowledged by the global community multiple times. True. Um, he, she has got very few equivalents mm -hmm. across the globe. Um, so that that is the, the, the nature of the beast, and uh, okay. uh, that is how it's forming. But we continue to to. Uh, engage with the inputs of our stakeholders and we're very happy to integrate and to refine our idea. We're still in the forming stage and we are integrating the project ideas uh, just so that by December we've got a coherent, interconnected mm -hmm. um, project uh, to launch in the new year and to celebrate throughout 2024 and to reflect throughout 2024 mm -hmm. and to reimagine 
ourselves um, as we prepare for our 150th anniversary. So mm. we are future oriented, uh, building on our past and ensuring that we consolidate everything that we are building in the present. Okay, Doc, thank you so much for that um, in-depth response. Now, right on to the longevity and sustainability of this program, right? Um, what are the plans in place in order to sustain um, the program for a full-on year? I know you said it's still on its forming stages. However, um, if you can just elaborate on the ideas that um, the program currently has in place to be able to, you know, carry it on for a full year. You know, what is, what is becoming... Uh, clear uh, with every step that we take in the development of the program yes. is that it's going to be very difficult to pick highlights mm. in 2024 because I think 2024 from start to finish is just going to be a consistent highlight mm. uh, for RU 120. Okay. I'll just give you a snapshot. Um, we have got four major events in each quarter. Um, we're going to have a journalism summit, for example, okay. in the first quarter. Now, a journalism summit is something beyond just the pedagogy, mm. teaching of journalism, yes. and the practice of journalism. But it extends further to the role and contributions uh, to the challenges, successes and failures of journalism mm. globally. True. Uh, you know, my own research um, goes back to the, to the launch of the first newspaper in South Africa, mm -hmm. the Advertiser in 1824, mm -hmm. and tracks how journalism contributed mm -hmm. to the state of affairs that we today have in yes. South Africa, which has generally been very oppressive and, and, and deeply inhumane. But it also highlights alongside that how journalism actually contributed to the contestation of that very regime and system. Mm -hmm. um, to this day, you would know that journalism has contributed to unearthing information about what has come to be known as state capture. Mm -hmm. It is journalists who have risked their lives to provide that information, to yes. expose that, and give us a chance to um, reinvent ourselves as a people. Mm -hmm. But again, if you look at my research, it is journalism that is keeping inequality in place today, so it provides its nuts and bolts. Mm. You know, it is such a powerful, powerful um, social enterprise. Um, so that summit is going to look at that spectrum of interrelated concerns, mm -hmm. things that we can celebrate about journalism and, and, and things that we really need to reflect upon throughout the training, throughout the value chain. Mm -hmm. In January, again, we've got an education summit. Again, unprecedented concept in South Africa. You know that Rose University has sought to work with the local community to pull ourselves by our boots, bootstraps from the quagmire mm. of misgovernance that mm. we've experienced and that has led to some of the um, unfortunate experiences in terms of infrastructure service delivery in our community. So Rose University funded a concept called Makanda Circle of Unity. Okay. And we're going to have an education summit because under the auspices of that in our community engagement program, Rose University partners with the schools around. And if you look at the trajectory of that program, we have had a situation where uh, former Model C schools that have been well endowed mm -hmm. relative to public schools mm -hmm. have actually come to be second in terms of producing bachelor passes. And that is very much consistent with the footprint of this program that is implemented, backed by Rhodes University. Mm -hmm. And there will be other highlights. Fast forward to November, mm -hmm. we are going to have our biggest reunion ever at Rhodes University of the people called knocking themselves on, on heaven's door. Yes. You know, they have got a, a, a site, a digital site where they mobilize. They have got no less than 1,600 members there. And already, if you go there, it's a high of activity and much of the discourse is about planning for this big highlight in November next year. Mm -hmm. And there are people who are booking places but by numbers. They would say at 5, at 15, at 20. And we're talking people about coming from all corners of South Africa, mm -hmm. from Cape Town, from Johannesburg, from all over. Mm -hmm. But also people coming from overseas who have already booked <laughs> their spaces. <laughs> yes. And when they come here, they are coming here as a major reunion. You know, they are coming here to contribute to us uh, in terms of how 
we're running the institution and where the institution is at, they mm -hmm. ask questions and they are engaged. But they're also coming here to bear witness mm -hmm. to the renaming of the iconic Great Field mm -hmm. after Alistair Whitley. Okay. Alistair Whitley was a humanist himself, an anti-apartheid activist. And council recently approved the renaming of this iconic field after him. Oh, nice. So it, 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 it's, it's right true, there will be honorary awards um, not quite like what we are used to mm -hmm. in terms of the distinguished honorary awards that the Vice Chancellor extends and all the honorary doctorates that coincide with our graduations. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about different concepts in terms of honoring people who have contributed to society, not necessarily Rhodes University, but yeah. remember, um, if you look across society, you'll find that in key stations you have got somebody who's got a connection somehow to Rhodes yes. University. So we are conceptualizing lifetime awards mm -hmm. to extend to these people to acknowledge them uh, for what they've done to society but also to encourage them mm -hmm. to do more so this is really part of rebuilding society it's part of community to rebuilding um, and advance okay. humanity all right thank you doc now you were speaking about various um people from overseas that will come and um, witness what Rose University has done in terms of its academic, in terms of you know the work that you've just mentioned. Um, now they're coming right in order to celebrate this master and uh, I just want us to address um, what are, uh, what is the university intending to um, fix in terms of you know there is um, infrastructural challenges that the university is facing. Um, some buildings are indeed, um, you know, deteriorating. Now, what does um, the university have in place in order to ensure that before these uh, people come and witness what the university has done, um, what's in plan? What's yeah. in place? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the self-directing teams mm -hmm. uh, that I didn't mention is called Legacy Constructions. Okay. Um, legacy Constructions has got three mandates. Mm -hmm. uh, one is restoration, mm -hmm. two is development, mm -hmm. and three is beautification. Okay. And that covers the spectrum mm -hmm. uh, in terms of whatever backlogs. You see, we've got aging infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Many of the buildings at Rose University on campus are, are heritage buildings, and they have got aging infrastructure mm -hmm. and we we have got a comprehensive program to play catch up okay. uh, to ensure that we restore the, the, the functionality of our infrastructure. Okay. We're very proud of this campus. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in fact we are going to have a, as part of the knocking on heaven's door homecoming mm -hmm. um, a comprehensive tour of campus mm -hmm. because you know when they were here in the 1970s the center of campus is, is where was where the, the the maths department is now. Okay. And that center has now moved about eight hundred meters um, further on towards the hill. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got a lot of development that has taken place, okay. a lot of development that is taking place. As you would be aware, um, we've got a two hundred million construction that is taking place at Camp Farm Building, mm -hmm. and we've got a ninety million construction. Uh, that is taking place next door there, yes. which is about the institute. Mm -hmm. And our maintenance budget has been completely reviewed, mm -hmm. you know, to ensure that we play this catch up. Mm -hmm. We're not doing this for RE120. Okay. We're doing this for our students. Mm -hmm. We're doing this for our um, uh, employees. Mm -hmm. We're doing this for, for the pride of the university. Okay. Uh, it, it, is, it is a project that is not without challenges. We've got challenges and major among those is finances mm -hmm. uh, to be able to keep up. But yes. uh, from a strategy point of view, we, we are ensuring that we, we play in this catch up and that we make a, a, a difference because the student, student experience mm -hmm. and worker experience are key among how we envision ourselves. Okay. So remember, I was saying that uh, um, RU120 in the introduction is about, it's a platform yes. to rethink, mm -hmm. to remodel, mm -hmm. to do things differently and to do things better. Okay. So I really would like to call on everyone to use the momentum that is building around this mm -hmm. project to make sure that we sustain a, a brand 
that works. Okay. That works for its students, mm -hmm. that works for its employees, that mm -hmm. works for the community, that works for the continent and the global community. Okay. Pretty much along the lines of the founding vision uh, of this institution. So issues like you are raising now yes. are real and mm -hmm. they must find expression mm -hmm. in RU120. So okay. RU120 is not a vanity project. Mm -hmm. It is certainly not a vanity project. Mm -hmm. It is a project to rethink and to remodel this mm -hmm. brand and to reposition it and put it in its rightful place mm -hmm. in the competitive environment where it operates globally. Mm -hmm. So we've got, we've got a, a huge vision and a bigger vision as the university okay. behind RU120. Okay. And issues like you are raising, practical concepts mm -hmm. on the ground mm -hmm. uh, are very much part of that. I just need to share this with you just to see the, the granular level to which we take things. Yes, yes. There are two big buildings mm -hmm. that you cannot miss as you drive down Somerset Street yes. uh, that you would see as Rhodes University facade. Mm -hmm. They are the Albany Museums, mm -hmm. two museums. Yes. And, and then you've got the Arch, mm -hmm. and that has been integrated into the cultural discourse among students at Rhodes University. People think that those are part of Rhodes University, they are mm -hmm. not. But as part of RU120, we have come closer to the managing structures of those buildings okay. and come to an agreement that if it is necessary, we would like to partner with them to make sure that those buildings are well looked after because they are imposing structures mm -hmm. and they are very much part of the Rhodes University facade. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if they are dilapidated, if they are not looked after as they should, then that rubs off to Rhodes University. Mm -hmm. And there is a growing agreement and under mutual understanding between us and those structures mm -hmm. to work together to make sure that we keep the same standard. Okay. So things are changing mm -hmm. and things are going to change further. And it, this is an opportunity to build further momentum behind the idea to rethink. Mm -hmm. uh, point problems with solutions, yes. build on the momentum and ensure that we resolve our problems mm -hmm. and we create a brand in 2025 onwards. Yes. We would want to render some of the concerns that we're talking about mm -hmm. today history. Yes. Um, and face rather problems about what's new that we can add just so by 2050 mm -hmm. we'll be able to credit the class of 120 mm -hmm. for thinking ahead. Okay. You know, in terms of a number of things, and there are so many things that you can think of in this ever-changing uh, socio-economic environment mm. that we can we can we can do mm. to reposition Rhodes University. Look, there's so much that's going for us. Mm. We are small. We are outside of any metro. Yes. Uh, we are equidistant to the different metros. The sea is only 45 minutes from us. But how do we make this space? A, an alluring space mm -hmm. for students, for researchers, all over. Yes. Because there is so much, if you come here to Rhodes University, one thing mm -hmm. that becomes your priority is your, is your studies. Mm -hmm. uh, but we need to make sure that we develop uh, conjointly with the local space mm -hmm. so that amenities are available, that there is there are options available to people in terms of the services, medical services, educational services across the safety and security, the city is clean mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So among the key stakeholders, our vision extends beyond the parameters of this university okay. to recreate a dream mm -hmm. uh, in the eastern province of, of, of this country. Okay. Um, and we've got a lot to build on to realize that. All that we need is the energy of everyone who is involved, our students, our investors, our alumni, to push together, mm. pointing at problems but working for solutions um, to reposition Rhodes University as, as, as an iconic global brand. Okay, Doc, thank you so much. That was very informative. I've definitely learned a lot right now. Um, but let's take it back, right? I know we're speaking about changes and the vision of Rhodes University. Now I want to take it to the communication side of Rhodes University be it internal or external. Now, I want to take the angle of when you first began your tenure at the university and until now, what has changed um, during your tenure in terms of um, communication internally within the university and externally um, outside of Rhodes University walls? Yeah. yeah. 
look, my, my first innings, if I could call them that, uh -huh. at Rhodes University was when I came to do my master's. Mm. That was in 1999. It was a totally different um, communication environment mm -hmm. then. I suppose you didn't have the various communication options that yes. uh, you have now. There mm -hmm. was no Twitter, there was no Facebook, <laughs> um, the, the, uh, there were memos. Mm. <laughs> there was memorandum and there was there were the physical notice boards. Yes. And you would know which notice board to go to, you needed mm -hmm. to go there. And I'm sure people were responsible for communication and the responsibility to go and change the posts on the notice boards <laughs> on a daily or weekly basis yes. and replace them if the elements sometimes uh -huh. ravage the pieces of paper that they posted there. So it's a very different uh, kettle of fish. So mm -hmm. our whole communication environment has been rethought and remodeled and reconfigured around what we've got. Okay. We've got a Twitter page which I think four years ago, mm -hmm. uh, if you compare by the by the followership now, mm -hmm. would have grown multiple fold, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, we've got various other platforms, we've got a YouTube uh, channel, we've mm -hmm. got a, a, a Facebook um, platform and um, internally we have got uh, web-based communication products. Okay. But um, more than anything, I'm very excited about um, what has happened in terms of, and what is happening in mm -hmm. terms of just rethinking the division for communication and mm -hmm. advancement as okay. an entity. Mm -hmm. And alongside that, rethinking the two critical um, areas that the, the division spans, mm -hmm. which is resource mobilization and communication and marketing. Okay. And looking at that at an institutional level rather than at a divisional level. Mm -hmm. And ensuring that if you look, for example, at our um, the fundraising mechanism at Rhodes University. Mm -hmm. It involves various people. Yes. We've got critical role players inside and outside of the university, inside and outside of the division. And also just in terms of our marketing, uh, we appreciate that we need to approach marketing not just as, a, as, a, as an entity, but as an institutional function, as a budget item. Okay. So if you look at it according to that approach, you identify a number of role players and you can actually create uh, e uh, uh, economies of efficiency and economies of scale. Mm -hmm. You can um, strategize mm -hmm. at a much broader scale. So this this is where we are. You know, um, a culture is a very difficult thing to transform. And whether it works or not, sometimes when you are stepped in, into a particular culture, mm -hmm. your, your view is limited to what you appreciate about it but you may sometimes not see what is possible outside of yeah. that until you break out of your comfort zone and realize opportunities that you never imagined existed. Yes. So I do think that an approach to a, a rethinking communication and marketing and resource mobilization as a budget item starting from there, um, you are able to leverage new opportunities mm -hmm. and build new avenues and new possibilities <laughs> to take your project forward. In, in, into a, a, a changing uh, space and an environment. Because you see now, you, if, if we could see uh, educational institutions as existing and operating in a competitive space, mm -hmm. that competition has now been thrown wide open. Um, you find universities from London, um, from the UK, uh, from the US, with a major footprint in, in, on the African continent. Something that is unheard of, you had exchange programs in the mm -hmm. past where you would send a handful of students and scholars to go there. But now, the digital functionality and capabilities have brought them here. Yes. So even us as Rhodes University in this space, we therefore need to not only um, uh, harness the reputation we have, we need to accentuate strengthen that reputation and ensure that we build a footprint in various other markets outside um, of the uh, physical access that we have mastered now. We've got okay. students here from Scandinavia, from the whole of the continent mm -hmm. of Africa, uh, from elsewhere. But we need to have a presence where they come from mm -hmm. so that it doesn't just take the, the physical travel and to come and register at Rhodes University, that without leaving home, you should be able to do this. Yes. So these are the kind of things that require rethinking. There are many people who really treasure that university qualification from Rhodes University, mm. uh, but who may not have the means and the wherewithal 
to come to Makanda, mm. or who would love to have it from there. So these are the kind of possibilities that we must enable. And that is going to take this re-envisioning program that I'm talking about. Okay. If we're going to harness and use RU124, it is, we're going to cut out this university into a beautiful uh, uh, space in, in the future. Okay, I'm so glad you highlighted um, the current communication age that we are in and uh, the now digital sphere of how things are done and also um, how you highlighted the difference between um, us, which are, um, we are now titled, according to communication, we are titled as um, the digital natives, right? And, uh, you know, the previous and the past ways of communicating and the individuals that were exposed to that particular um, communication are now um, categorized as digital immigrants. So that was going to, <laughs> that was going to bring us to um, my next question, but I'm so glad that you highlighted it in your um, response right now. So now let's talk about the RU120 um, logo. What was the inspiration behind it? And how did this pretty beautiful um, formation of a logo come about? <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? Yes. Um, you know, one thing that is more beautiful than, than, than the symbol and the image mm. is what it symbolizes, and secondly, the fact that it was created by our students. Okay. This was not outsourced. Yes. And um, the, the inspiration behind it are symbols that exist in this institution that mean a lot to us. Okay. Take, for example, the bicycle sculpture. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the bicycle sculpture constitutes an incomplete zero oh, on the logo, yes. right? And the incomplete zero, it tells you about a, an ongoing project. Mm. You know, and RE120 basically um, contributes to that project, to the deepening of that project. Okay. So the students took the, 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 the zero from the incomplete sculpture, mm -hmm. which is an iconic space. Yes, Love it I when saw I see that. Students <laughs> sitting on the lawns there and, and, and and then we've got our um, time-tested uh, clock tower mm -hmm. the admin building, yes. administration building, one of the oldest buildings there. They have it. And then you'll see that everything is broken into pieces. It's, it's, it's embedded, basically, on, on, a, on a solid foundation. Mm -hmm. Everything is built on a solid foundation. The students are really appreciating the, 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 the excellence that Rhodes University has been able to produce throughout the years. And I don't know what you're going to make of that. Others think that it, it, these are the rays of the sun, of the oh. rising sun. We accept that. Yes, we accept that. <laughs> that is allowed. But others also see that as a time-tested brand. So they see that as, as representing the clock from the clock oh. tower. So there's so much that can be said about, about this brand. Mm. You know, that the students took to heart. And they basically are communicated to, communicating to the university communities mm. through this icon. So it's an icon that has just been launched. Uh, it is now electronically launched on, on all our signatures and other uh, applications, you know, stationary, etc. And it's going to be there throughout uh, uh, 2024. And um, its story will be told on the internet. We have it on the intranet now, which mm -hmm. is an internal focused platform, but we are going to expose it uh, come January when we do the official launch with our students and, and, the, and the Rhodes University community to inaugurate the project in 2024 and we're going to switch it um, live and, 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 and go live on an external facing platform um, with the information behind the logo. Yeah. All right, Doc. Now, um, moving to, as we speak about the RU120 now, um, what is the vision for the next 120 years? You know, I, I wish I was the proprietor of that. Yes. Um, but uh, I really feel small when I, I look at the contributions that are coming mm -hmm. um, and what people are doing um, to prepare uh, ideas and concepts for where they see Rhodes University. Mm. You know, one of the things that I can tell you, we are the only research intensive institution outside of any metropole. Mm -hmm. um, three in ten students at Rhodes University are post -grad. We want to grow that. Mm -hmm. Remember Rhodes University, um, we have only 8,000 students okay. and 50% of those are in residence. Uh, while the numbers are small, but uh, per capita we are the biggest residence, residence institution uh, in that sense. We would like to grow that 30% of postgrad to a significantly high number. 
because as we cannot grow because mm -hmm. of infrastructure constraints and we also just appreciate the ratios where between students and staff at Rose University just so that our students um, our student is known as Amile not G19 or G20 <laughs> yeah. you know that kind of thing you're not a student number or a human being so we really treasure that that has historically been our our strength mm -hmm. and, and value proposition but we'd like to grow our postgrad for okay. sustainability okay so we really are intensifying our research focus and we're doing extremely well. If we, you look at the registration of patents, uh, registration of products, the, the innovation, you know, whether you're talking uh, meerkat telescope, you're talking about uh, uh, biopesticides to move away from these uh, uh, dangerous chemicals that we spray, uh, onto the environment uh, and, and what they create to living species, etc. Uh, or you're talking journalism research. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I mean, honestly, the, we have got a great product to offer to the world mm -hmm. and want to, to deepen that. Um, and if we did, we are going to be contributing in a, in a multiplicity of ways to our sustainability but also to human advancement. You know, because then you have got a different financial model the moment you have got those students. So we are looking for scholarships mm -hmm. uh, and financial support for our um, final year students okay. to, to, to enable them to, to do their honours so that they can proceed to their masters and then to their PhDs. Um, we really are focusing on that. One of the key objectives of R120 is resource mobilisation okay. and this is about working together with our funders and with our alumni to build that dream, to build an iconic um, liberal arts institution um, here that, that, is, that is a coveted go-to space for people thinking research. Okay. And one of the projects is about uh, completely reconfiguring our, our main, line, main admin building okay. and to host okay. there a, a, a research institute a state-of-the-art mm -hmm. facility yes. that caters for our, our, our post-grad students. Okay. So those are, are some of the things that we are, we are, we are, we are working on uh, okay. as a university and it's part of our, it's a key part of our sustainability strategy as a university. Okay, interesting, Doc. Now, um, let's bring you back to the community. I know you touched upon how um, RU120 will benefit um, the Makanda community, but now I just want you to please elaborate more on that factor and, uh, you know, explain what the program will, um, how the program will be beneficial to the Makanda community yeah. now outside of the students, but now the socio um uh, impact of RU120. Yeah. Yes. You know, RU120 is a, it, it's part of the Rhodes University institutional culture and ethos. Mm -hmm. Why do I bring that context up? Mm -hmm. um, you know, first, Makanda is one of the most economically depressed yes. um, uh, localities in South Africa. And um, Rhodes University, unlike many mm -hmm. organizations, mm -hmm. does not believe in outsourcing services. Mm -hmm because that has a tendency to deprive people of economic opportunities. Yes. So whether you're talking about our, uh, you see we live in Makanda and now we have got friends <laughs> greeting as they pass. Uh, so we don't outsource services. Yes. We make sure that we operate um, labor intensive models mm -hmm. to give people across um, different uh, uh, stations in society an opportunity to work yes. for this institution mm -hmm. and we remunerate them fairly. We we'll work with the unions in doing that. Second, Rhodes University is invested in Makanda. Mm -hmm. As I indicated, Council approved funding for a structure called the Makanda, mm -hmm. so the, so the, uh, Makanda Circle of Unity, yes. which is a civil society structure that's affiliated to Rhodes University, but that is working in the local government space. Mm -hmm governance space yes. uh, to pull together efforts of community um, structures for the advancement of Makanda. Mm -hmm. And there are many projects that we have pursued, including our ongoing um, pushback against mm -hmm. the, um, the, the, the unfortunate idea of seeking to relocate the seat of the High Court mm -hmm. from Makanda to uh, 
to, uh, the to be sure. To so to other problems, yes. Yes. Mm. And um, there are many other things that we work very closely with the municipality. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we are the biggest rate payer mm -hmm. in Makanda. So that is what I call the, the, the institutional ethos mm -hmm. and culture. Yes. Uh, but with regard specific to RU120, we, we, we couldn't imagine RU120 outside of the, um, of the, of the community. Mm -hmm. You know, even when we're talking about um, giving Rose University a facelift, mm -hmm. one of the things that the Vice Chancellor has raised was that this university is not going to be cordoned off. Mm -hmm. We're not going to have a parameter war. Yeah. You know, because we, we, we are in this community and of this community. Yes. Uh, in word and in deed. And so even the fact that we have no boundary between the community and the university it has to stay like that. So there are concepts that we are envisaging there, but we're envisaging it with the community in mind. If mm -hmm. anything you would like to have constructions that will enable better communication and interaction between us and, uh, and, and the community. Whether you're talking sports, we really would like to uh, improve the, the facilities at Rhodes University, mm -hmm. primarily for the benefit of our students, mm -hmm. but also for the benefit of the young people yes. around us, you know, because we do feel that, you know, Makanda used to be a, a space for sporting excellence and it's possible to restore that you know um, it's possible to restore that and we do believe that through sharing of our facilities as we develop them we will be able to benefit unlike any other person yeah. we have got the opportunity and the chance uh, to integrate with the community also at that level mm -hmm. so even when we thinking about games we think about how to link with the other celebrations that are taking mm -hmm. uh, place various anniversaries that involve different community structures and we, we're linking up with them through a, a self-directing team that is called students and stakeholders you okay. see we we, we we were very lucky because you see i suppose due to the size of our community engagement i might break one one bit and, and just you know our community engagement program is the only one in africa to be awarded the mac janet prize mm. it's a coveted global award mm -hmm. got it we got it because of the size. Mm. Um, uh, every one in ten students at Rhodes University, in fact, I think that figure has since changed upwards, mm. is involved in a community, in community engagement. So there are mentors, there are advisors, there are role models mm. for young and upcoming uh, learners from from the local schools. They they're involved there. They go there. Mm. They do their research there, and it's not extractive research it's it's co-creating with members of the community so that is that is that is part of the contribution that that, that we make uh, to the community so the, the, just the entire institutional ethos is embedded and invested in, in in the success of this community because we appreciate that um, uh, while we may have the options um, to insulate ourselves there is no possibility of us creating a, an entity that is separate from its social location. Mm -hmm. Rose University's success is the success of this community, and the success of this community is the success for Rose University. Yes. So we're facing with serious challenges as it is, um, that uh, are imposed upon us sometimes by um, decisions and or non-decisions that you could really do without, by lack of will yeah. in critical areas mm -hmm. that we can do without, but uh, we stand available um, with our scholarship and our resources um, to work with the community for the mutual advancement of both the institution and the community in which it is located. So RE120 will be a, a platform for the expression of this integration mm -hmm. and interconnection um, in different ways, in, 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 in culture, um, uh, in, in, in the real bread and butter issues, how we structure uh, relationships around bread and butter issues mm -hmm. with the local community uh, and, and all of that. But we also are very happy and we have got alumnus of Rhodes University, mm -hmm. uh, alumni of Rhodes University from all over who are offering their services to assist mm -hmm. the local government for mm -hmm. example. You know, interestingly I can tell you, we had an alumnus from Switzerland mm -hmm. who said, I'm happy to run leadership development programs pro bono. Mm -hmm for the local municipality. 
Where do you nice. get that? This is a person who has not had a physical connection with Makanda or Rhodes University mm. for the longest time, for decades, but they found it um, in themselves to make this offer and say, avail yourself, you can do this virtually, mm. I will run it at a virtually a great time, pro bono, mm. leadership and development. And trust me, leadership is one of the areas that we may take for granted, mm. but that's where many of our really serious problems come from, mm. uh, where everybody is a leader. Mm. And uh, in fact, uh, there is a culture to, to even casually uh, refer to each other as leadership. Everybody is leadership. Hi, leadership. <laughs> yeah, yeah, leadership. Everybody is leadership. But when it, when it comes to the deployment of people in mm -hmm. positions of leadership, um, you know, and they are found wanting, unfortunately, it is not just them. Mm suffer. In fact, they would be the last to suffer. The people who really suffer are the recipients of mm. the services that are expected from their enactment mm. of their roles and discharging of their responsibilities. Sure. And that's where the problem is. Mm. So we are the university that prides itself um, as where leaders land. And we believe that there are so many leaders mm. that have come out of this. And we need to review our social system to give roles and responsibilities on the basis of competence and mm. qualification and not any other criterion. It doesn't mean that there are no other important elements to be considered, mm -hmm. but it's important to prioritize competence if we are going to build a winning nation. And we believe that we can, we can do that. Uh, and we're going to contribute by amplifying our scholarly voice and engaging with societal issues of mm -hmm. real concern. Um, just to conclude that answer again, yes, um, one of the key reflective points for next year mm -hmm. on that calendar yes. is the issue of student funding. Mm. You know, um, there is something that we have become used to as South Africans. I call it a gore routine. Mm. Every year there is going to be serious problems um, uh, at universities mm. that uh, turn universities into sites of violence instead of learning institutions. Mm -hmm. You know, students see the university, they see the vice chancellors, the registrar, the deputy vice chancellors, mm -hmm. their HODs and deans, and when they are settled with the frustration of being unable to register and all sorts of things not working well, mm -hmm. and they take out that frustration um, uh, on, 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 at those sites. That leads to criminal charges mm. and yes. the whole criminalization, and it becomes a security issue. Mm. And we know that even if you could have battalions of soldiers at every university, there is a real issue, and it has got a causal factor. Mm. We need to go there and see why is that happening. That's so, cool. when we have got this discussion on the sustainability of student funding mm -hmm. and the model for student funding. We really do believe that we could even actually close some gaps in the in the in the conceptualization of the model that you've got now. Mm. We've got MS first now. Yes. But now we know that there are mutations and there are changes no, and they're not favorable mm. to the very objective of uh, uh, instituting mm. such a scheme mm. to assist students who require financial means to go through university. Yes. So what is it that we missed in our conceptualization? Mm. We would like to facilitate an involved reflection. On, on, on these aspects. Mm. And there are many others. You were asking me, how do we sustain this? And I said to you, <laughs> you know, when I look at that calendar as it is evolving, every event, every discussion, dialogue, every platform, every activation, every cultural um, uh, initiative, um, every documentary, um, everything is a highlight. Mm. And it is it is conceptualized with society in mind, with the students in mind, with the workers in mind, with the local community in mind, yes. with our alumni in mind. And we're not done because we continue to say, send to ru120 at ru.ac.za. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple um, address, your ideas, mm -hmm. and say, this is what is missing. Yes. I'm interested in finding out a bit more about this. Mm -hmm. or. We are the students, class of 1980, who want to set up a scholarship and would like to fund a, a young uh, female student who is 
uh, doing research in this discipline or who is registered in that faculty? Mm -hmm. And how can Rose University assist That's us in, in, in funding that scholarship? We've got initiatives, for instance, you've got, you know the student debt? Yes. Irrespective of the measure that you could use, is calculated at 17 billion rands that is owed by South African students. Of course, there are international students that are there, but it's a very small proportion. Yes. So if you look at the Rhodes portion there, the Rhodes University students owe about 210 million rands. And these are students who have graduated. So in other words, irrespective of whether you may have been the first graduate in your, in your, in your family, yes. you are sitting without a parchment. You know, it's amazing what uh, um, motivates a young person to still go through their studies and pass, knowing that you're not going to get your parchment. When you walk through that stage mm. and you, you, you get kept by the chancellor, you know that at the end, while others will be handed their parchments and they can go and face the future mm. with confidence, you don't have yours. You know that at prayers, don't ask what your mom thinks of you when you are looking yeah. for employment. Give us a letter from you. Yes. They want to send a certificate. Yes. So we launch a, a campaign called Unlocking Futures. So basically, we are unlocking futures of those students who may have graduated, those who are graduating on, uh, basically in their final year, mm -hmm. and those who are in the system to support them. So we've got a live online giving platform that, that, that is called Give and Gain. You can actually give as little as 50 rands there. You can give a thousand rands. Mm -hmm. You can just say, you know, this month I'm going to throw it there, and you can see the graph as we try to uh, eat into this 210 uh, million, million. rands mm -hmm. and release people in terms of them pursuing their futures. Mm -hmm. And this is the call that we make to to our alumni in particular, mm -hmm. to the funders there. There is no amount that is too small yes. to give. So if you can forego that cappuccino and also perhaps that lunch. And just say, you know what, it's a very simple mm -hmm. online giving page. It takes you literally seconds to transfer that 50 rands mm -hmm. onto that account and see that graph expand. You know, uh, we've just launched it. We are going to work with our students okay. internally to uh, really deepen the call to people uh, to, to, to be there. But it is there, it's live. And, and if you, the last I checked, there was 200 rands there. It's a small amount of money. But it will be something. And we believe yes. that the person who invested that 200 mm. rands there did it with a particular social intention, objective and goal mm. in mind. That is what we want to instill in, in our students, in our alumni, and in, our, in, in the people who are the friends of this institution, to say no amount is too small, you know, to make a difference. Yes. As our VC says, um, you can be God's answer to someone's prayer mm. by just depositing 50 rands. In, into an account that helps a student succeed. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much for that informative. Um, you know, that was, <laughs> that was um, quite uh, tangible information and very useful information as well. Um, if Doc can please just repeat uh, the website that one can access um, in order to make that contribution. Yeah. Um, I may not have the actual website now, but if you go to Rhodes University, University. giving page, okay. so it will be ru.ac.za, and go to the giving page, there are different options, mm -hmm. there you will find a survey value, this is not quite a given and gain, we we'll link the given and gain to okay. that, which is about just targeting the students, you know, of the 210 uh, million, we've just targeted those who are completing mm -hmm. and those who are still in the system. Okay. Um, you know, we had our, our reunions. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, we are continuing. We're going to Johannesburg at the end of this month. We're mm -hmm. taking this message to our alumni network. And somebody said, how can you have students in your system who are not uh, uh, paid up? Now, the VC has got a policy mm -hmm. that he, he stands for in his name. He said, mm -hmm. no student who is academically um, uh, talented, <laughs> uh, but who may be financially needy, should be deprived an opportunity mm -hmm. to pursue their academic dream. So we've got students who are advancing year after year, but they are unable to pay their fees. Mm -hmm. We don't rule them out. And those students are entitled to the services that other students who are paying uh, are entitled to. So the university has to make good on that and, 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 and extend those services. They don't come free. The university has to step in and, and pay for them. Mm -hmm. So if you, if, you, if you go to that site, you will 
find different options. Under SSA learning, for example, mm -hmm. it's very easy to access. You'll find actually a range of options. You can give to undergraduate students. Mm. You can give to postgraduate students. You can give even to residence maintenance. And residence maintenance includes things like um, we want you to, to buy our students uh, recreation facilities. They can buy a table tennis set. Mm. They can buy a, a piano or anything. Mm. Maybe you are connected to that particular residence and it, you even may want to just donate your own piano mm -hmm. and say our students can use it at my own residence. Um, or you can um, contribute to the university endowment. University endowment is what makes enables us to have policies like that to say mm -hmm. no students will be excluded, you know, if they are advancing uh, uh, financially. But if you want to set up a scholarship with your friends, maybe you've got a group of 10 friends and you're willing to contribute 100 grants for the next 50 years and you want a scholarship to be set up after somebody, it could be your, your grandma's name, we are happy to assist you to set that up and, and to get that going, okay. you know. So all possibilities are there. So you can write to various addresses that you can find. There are a number of generic addresses that you can send your information to. But if it's about RU120 and, and the campaigns that we're mounting as part of resource mobilization in RU120, it's a very simple address, um, ru120 at ru.ac.za. In fact, whatever you want to raise with us, if you mm -hmm. missed any information that we shared here now, yes. just remember that address and right there, your inquiry will be attended mm -hmm. to and facilitated. Are you 120 at are you dot ac dot za. Okay, thank you so much, Doug. Now, in conclusion, right, um, what are your last remarks in terms of the RU 120 project and your remarks towards the students that are also looking up to the university standard and looking up to you maybe in the um, faculty of communications right what are your last remarks before we close yeah um i i, I really just want to say you know re120 is for all of us mm -hmm. re120 is about all of us and um, let us all be part of it let us take our claim and and let us push it um uh, to a very progressive direction mm -hmm. it's not a a, 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 a Ma Professor Mabizela's campaign. It's yes. not a Vice Chancellor's campaign. Mm -hmm. It's as much a student campaign as it is an alumni com campaign. It's a Rhodes University campaign. Mm -hmm. So let's come and contribute. You know, there are many faults that you can point out. Yes. But one thing that we have resolved that we're not going to do, we're not going to gaze at our neighbors mm -hmm. and wallow in our frustrations. We are going to think big and we're going to envision a better situation. Mm -hmm. We're going to be um, sources of solutions rather than to be um, the amplifiers of problems, mm. you know. And we would like RE120 to be a, a breakthrough, yes. a breakthrough for, for everybody. And like I said, with that contribution, it can indeed be an opportunity to rethink mm. and to remodel the brand. Touching on all areas that really matter to us. Whether it's about improvement of teaching and learning, whether it's about re-envisioning our research strategy, whether it's about um, maintenance yes. of campus facilities, mm -hmm. whether it's about the stronger connections with alumni and or our funders, mm -hmm. all ideas, we, we want them because that's how we really will be able to consolidate a coherent and strong program for RU120 mm -hmm. that builds brands. And that is our intention. That is where our commitment is mm -hmm. and we'll spend our effort working in, in co-creating with our stakeholders. We shall spend our effort to achieve that and have something to show and reflect upon in 2025 onwards. Okay, thank you so much, Doc, um, for that insightful engagement. We really are um, appreciative of you taking your time to join us and elaborate on factors that are concerning our students and factors that um, the RU120 project will indeed um, pave the way for such positive results as 
um, referring to your visions of the RU120 project. So thank you so much once again. Thank you, Thank you, Mampese. Thank you, Mampese. <laughs> and, and thanks for such a, a safe uh, piloting of, uh, <laughs> of, of this craft. I really appreciate it. All right, you talk yeah. any time. Um, thank you so much for <laughs> joining us. And uh, until next time, I am Amila Skepe. And thank you so much for deciding to, you know, uh, tune in to our pilot project with Dr. Lizzie Pajikas, who is the Director of uh, Communications and Advancement around here at Rhodes University.